you join us here on Tech Beat, where leaders learn, innovate, and grow. Today, I'm in our makeshift studio with my new business partners, with Eric Session and Jake Killer, who have joined us from Intellitex. We're going to have a, a little conversation today, a little bit about our journeys together and our individual journeys, talk a little bit about what the future holds and all that kind of stuff. Before we dig in, just I want to mention a couple of quick items, a few announcements. Again, thanks so much for joining us. We're happy to have you as our guest here today. My name is Earl Foot, by the way, and I'm founder CEO of Nexus IT. We are an outsourced IT support and cybersecurity services firm based here in Northern Utah and servicing a nationwide footprint. TechBeat is now on Spotify, Apple, Pandora, and all your podcast platforms. Check us out there. You can certainly listen via audio or video anywhere you're at. We would love your support there. We will be taking relevant questions throughout the hour and at the end of our segment here. So if you have any questions that you want to pose about Jake and Eric's background, about IntelliTechs, about why we brought the two companies together and what our plans are for the coming years, feel free to post those out in whatever platform you're joining us from. We'll get to whatever we can as we're rolling here. Let's see really awesome guests coming up on TechBeat. Garrett Clark and John Bowers will be joining me in September, just before the Silicon Slopes Tech Summit. Those are uh, business manager and executive director, not executive director. I'm, <laughs> I'm off on my titles today. John and Garrett run Silicon Slopes. Clint Betts is the executive director. Anyways, they'll be joining me here in September. Tara Spaulding, the managing director of Boom Startup. Sid Tetro, CEO of Brandless. Nate Randall, the CEO of Gap Wireless, will be joining us on TechBeat in November. I'm drawing a blank. Let's see, oh, we have a couple of cybersecurity related TechBeats coming up. Romaine Marshall, who is one of the nation's foremost cyber attorneys, is going to join me, and we're going to have a Woman in Cyber TechBeat segment as well with our own Mallory Lovestad and Tara Anderson from Framework Security and Aubrey Murray from Perpetual Storage. Who are going to join me on an upcoming segment. So keep an eye out for announcements around all those. All right, so let's get down to it. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for having us. Yeah, of course. Excited for the journey that we have embarked upon and that we're going to continue to embark upon together. Lots of really cool stuff to you know, talk about this hour, a lot of cool things happening. We're right now at the Council Lake at the industry complex. Before we get into some of the future of, or what the future holds for our two organizations, and as a, let's, uh, let's learn a little bit more about many business partners. Eric, you're next to me, so maybe let's start with you. Just tell people about your journey, your life journey from childhood into becoming an entrepreneur, a founder, and let's go there and we can talk with, with Jake a little bit. My family is has a history of entrepreneurship, and so I'm actually a fourth generation business owner, an entrepreneur. I grew up in a retail business and saw the joys and pains of the business that go along with it and thought to myself, why not do that myself? Set my career on the right path to position myself to one day start a business and met up with Jake along the way and we decided we could change the way that we had seen through other providers of what was happening and decided we could give it a go and started out 11 years ago and it's been a dream ever since. All right, so 11 years since the inauguration of Intellitex, you and Jake started as partners. Had, you've had a really great 11 year journey, but you guys have done some really meaningful things, built an awesome team, a great code of clients that are really great clients. I know that, like Nexus IT, you guys have always been partnership, client forward type of, type of an organization, very much value added, integral type of partnership approach. Over, over those 11 years, it's been, of course, I've been around. The town and around the industry for now 24 and on september in september we'll celebrate 24 years so it's awesome yeah watching your journey yeah we're going to have our 24th birthday here in, in uh, a week or two but watching your journey has been really impressive and see what the way that you two have built a really meaningful business and, and what's been important to you in that journey and where your focuses have gone and now that all aligns so well but jake why don't we learn a little bit about your background and, and how you ended up a founder of alongside uh with Eric. Yeah, so for me, it all started in seventh grade. There was a need in the market, candy. And I used to go to NPS, local store here, to buy some cheap stuff. And there was my number one favorite candy was shock tarts. And I went and would buy them for four, for a dollar, sell them for 50 cents, which is cheaper than you could get them in the vending machines. I, I actually had my first employee at that time. I had to fire him. That was kind of, he 
a sampling product, <laughs> which wasn't allowed. Was that your brother? <laughs> you know, was one of my best friends, and it was very hard to let him go, but he understood that one good brother sometimes has to be. No, it, was, it was a lot of fun. It, it got big enough that the school shuts down. We were selling too much, causing issues with the vending machines. And so that ended my first business, but that was a lot of fun. And since then, it had always been something I was passionate about, working with people, seeing how we could change things. And when Eric and I started, what got me into IT was I was working in a mail room, not doing too much. I set up a check scanner, and they thought I was a genius because I was lazy and didn't want to go deposit checks. And then we had a hostile takeover in that business, and the new CEO came to me and said, do you know anything about IT? And I looked at him and I said, you name it, I can do it. <laughs> Which was an absolute lie, but I was willing to learn. So I changed my major at U, went into information systems, and from there, that's after that, I hooked up with Eric, and we saw, like he said, just sometimes IT has been looked at as sometimes a frustrating place to go, where people aren't willing to help you, or people can talk down to you, and we didn't like that. Our motto has forever been, change the IT experience, and that's because I had felt that time to have been a bad experience with IT, and we wanted to change that. And that has been our mission, and that, that's one of the reasons we wanted to partner and join with you, Earl, and, is you have the same vision. People first. How can we benefit our team? How can we benefit our clients? And how can we give them that experience? Because really, in my mind, IT should be the number one place people go. That if they need help, IT will always help them, no matter what. And that has always been our mission, and so that's what we've done. Yeah. Very cool, Jake. Thanks for uh, sharing a little bit about your journey. I do want to come back around and maybe have you guys just tell a little bit about the last 11 years of IntelliTex. But maybe, uh, I think you touched on something there, Jake, that I think is worth digging a little deeper into. And that is, in fact, we were just at our leadership, our monthly leadership offsite last Friday with our entire leadership team. We read an article, I think the publication might have been Harvard Business Review, just talked about the gap that generally exists between IT departments, cyber departments, and the rest of the business unit, and particularly the business leadership unit. And that has been something that all of us throughout our careers have observed, have lived in, and something we have intentionally worked to shift the focus on, excuse me, shift dynamics of, right? And candidly, look, IT departments and cyber departments, we tend to be nerdy people for geeks, right? Sometimes we're not the most extroverted. We, we might have some challenges with our people skills or communication. And so it's easy and natural, I think, for that gap to, to be created and oftentimes a lack of trust. As Jake, as you mentioned, as technologists, we know the power and impact that technology can have in a business as a significant enabler to that business. We know that when you really lean into being a tech-enabled business with the right automation, with the right business intelligence, with the right integration of your software platforms and your tech stack, we know how you can streamline processes, how you can save money, how you can get better insight into your business and make smarter decisions. And so that's, both of our entities have been on this journey to shift the relationship between IT and cyber departments and the rest of the business to a very value-added, trust-enabled relationship that allows technology to really become a massive competitive advantage in a business. First of all, that's one of the initial alignments that we saw within our own organizations is that both organizations are all about how do we have real tangible value to the market and our client relationships? How do we become a true extension of their team that isn't just another vendor, right? But a real partner that can plug into that business and enable and help them grow that business. And beyond that, a deep abiding care for the people that are involved, the clients, our team members, creating a culture, creating a, a place to work where people love what they do, where they can be proud of where they work, and they're, they're happy in a very healthy, trust-oriented workplace. And those were all things that were, we were just super aligned with. So maybe tell us about what IntelliText looked like in, in its infancy and how that's evolved and where you are now as an organization. Yeah. 
So initially started getting out in 2011, it was just Jake and I, we had a couple of clients that we started on very early with and just focused on that, that client relationship and perfected that approach to the difference we could see for them. And then within the first year of being in business, we brought on our first employee who remains with us today. He just crossed over his one year anniversary earlier this year, 10 years. Yes. 10 years. Sorry. 10 year anniversary with us. And then before our second full year in business, we brought on another employee as we continue to grow again, focusing on that IT experience and how we could do things better for the customer and leveraging technology, like you said, to be a driver in the business versus a source of pain. And as technology evolved, it used to be, there wasn't as big of an emphasis in cybersecurity. Security was there and prevalent, but not like it is today. And so we've had to grow and adapt and change the way that we manage our internal book of business, onboarding industry platforms, and really building out our technology stack that we use internally and vetting out those security providers. We've adapted over the years with industry leaders that have revolutionized the game as next gen products came out and then focusing also on, on the hardware side of things. What really, what does a business need in order to function as, as co-location and cloud services came about as big buzzword, everybody's like, Hey, I want to be in the cloud. And so having those deeper discussions on, does the cloud make sense? And in a lot of cases, the cloud makes sense for a lot of things. And in some cases, the cloud didn't quite yet. We've had to adapt and to you know, really keep our skills honed on, on what is new and upcoming in the technology space. Currently we manage a pretty sizable book of business. There's eight of us total today. And yeah, as we started the process, we, it was discussions with you and with Nexus, all of the tools that we had implemented align with all the tools that Nexus has been using as well, which quick pat on the back to us to say, Hey, we we're on the right page <laughs> <laughs> rather than steering off down some canal that we shouldn't be down. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Thank you, Eric. Again, I think one, one of the other unique alignments in, in our organizations that you uncover there is that the traditional managed IT services model is more around, call it like IT department as a service, some bundled products and solutions and the management of all that. Our two organizations and us as founders at the helm of those organizations have seen the writing on the wall of the need in the marketplace for robust cybersecurity, real cyber programs and plans and compliance programs to, to help our client want to be safe, take care of their proprietary data, their IP, take care of client and employee data, but two, to also have competitive advantage in the marketplace because the, the more you can illustrate in the marketplace that you are a cyber and compliant responsible business, the more business you can land, particularly with larger organizations who have mature and robust data governance programs, or they're really managing their vendor relationships tightly to make sure that those vendors are not exposing their data. And so that was one of the other alignments is that we've, both of our organizations have made a shift from the managed security services, excuse me, the managed services industry more into managed security services industry side and become experts in really creating cyber programs and creating and managing compliance programs within organizations. And again, plugging that all into a tech enablement engine that uh, is a driver of the business, right? Yeah. And this is a very real, we could spend hours and hours talking about the threat landscape right now and just how insane it is, how many businesses, how many organizations are consistent, governments are consistently, including our own consistently being hacked and under attack. All of us are under attack all the time. Jake, maybe if you want to dig in just a little bit more about how this relationship came together and the other alignments that, you know, that we all saw, why we saw a combined vision rather than a, a separated divided vision, and maybe talk a little bit to why we decided to bring it all together. Absolutely. So going a little bit back on our journey with the landscape and with IT, where we have seen that we had to be was nimble. Everything we're doing, like Eric was saying in the marketplace, really once ransomware really hit hard, 
that changed the game a lot. That was, if you take a look back in time and say, what were some of those catalysts that really made a change in the security industry? Ransomware did things to the industry that had never been seen before. And a lot of people use the same tools, use the same mindset, and we're attacking the same problems the old way we've done it, which that used to work. That was a good way to go. And like I said, we knew we had to be nimble. We saw the writing on the wall. Sometimes it was faint. Sometimes we could see it really clearly, but we knew we had to pivot and change and grow with the market and change. And so through our journey, we've always known Nexus. They've always been a wonderful player in the market. And Utah is very competitive. I don't know if a lot of people know how competitive the managed services industry is in Utah, but it's like white hot. And it's like there's 35 different companies on the, in the same building. Some people are doing a really innovative and trying to push the mark, like what we've tried to do. And some are more in the traditional IT mode where it's status quo and that has worked for years, but that doesn't work anymore. And as we were evaluating where we wanted to be constantly changing, where's the vision, where's the market going and how can we predict some of those things? Who are the leading vendors? Where can we be? We kept bumping it into Nexus. Always good. When we would go to do a proposal, they would have three names on the list, Intellitex, Nexus, and others. And that, that other changed, but Intellitex and Nexus didn't. And that made us start to think, if we're that aligned, we're constantly seeing the same things. We feel like the industry is small and we should be friends. Whether you're competing or not, you can compete and be good friends. Yeah. And we got introduced to Earl by one of the salesmen who we've had a long time with relationship with. And in that first meeting, we were hesitant. You always are. It's got to be guarded and you don't know what this is going to turn into. And it was the sushi. It broke you down. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. The sushi did it. Good sushi. And, and during that meeting, it, as we were talking, Earl would talk about his vision and it was just like, fireworks in the background. I don't know if you remember from Wayne's world when he first sees his girl and it's Dreamweaver playing and all you can see is that's almost what it felt like. <laughs> okay. It's Dreamweaver is playing. It's like, this is exactly what we're thinking. <laughs> this has been what we wanted to do. And this is what we've been trying to do. And so obviously it took a while we had to, we we're dating for a while and things were growing great. And more and more the vision was aligning. Eric and I have been working together for a long time. We've been good friends for 14 plus years and we knew each other, but to meet another like-minded person who we talk to people about Earl, who is Earl? We've seen him. I followed him on LinkedIn, those sort of things. And sometimes it's, is this too good to be true? Is he really who he's projecting? He is who he says he is. And that's what it has been. We know who Earl is. And as we got to know him more and more that all of those vision items that we had all aligned together. And we were able to really talk down the road where we should be, not just for us as founders, for our team, but for the industry. Where's the industry growing? What issues are there that need to be solved? And how can we solve them? Utah is the place to get stuff done. Wait, I think in all industries, obviously tech, but if you need stuff done, come to Utah. And that's who we are and we'll get stuff done. And that was our journey together. Obviously there was a lot of, um, different stuff within those communications, but Dreamweaver is our story. <laughs> that, that, from Wayne's world, Dreamweaver, that was Look up the story. references. You can always count on Jake to uh, bring the humor to the conversation. Um, and sometimes a little edge. <laughs> He's definitely the class clown of the, of the, of the group. But, yeah. um, Started in seventh grade as well. So that's yeah. where everything began. I've described this as serendipity. It, it was really from the moment we met and we already knew we'd been following your journey. You had been following us. We already knew there was really good alignment. Then we met and it was like, okay, it just feels like this was a match made in heaven. Like this was supposed to be right. So we, we listened, we, we brought the two entities together now. And as Jake has mentioned, and we'll talk a little bit more about this as we continue to go, but as founders in, in the IT and the tech and cybersecurity space, we are constantly trying to live in the future. We're constantly 
looking down the pike and looking to try to see what's out there, what's coming, what are the threats, what do businesses need, how can we add more value to the marketplace, how do we help our clients, how do we help help our people. And that's just, we're going to see a lot more of that in the coming months and years. Uh, We have a lot of exciting announcements that we're going to be releasing, some likely Q4 of this year, some will come Q1, Q2 of this next year, and then we'll just continue to roll because we have a very keen eye on what the future holds for business when it comes to technology and when it comes to cyber and compliance. And we are, we are building out that future right now together, which is really exciting. And we're building out ways, unconventional ways that, that will make the scenarios even more compelling for all stakeholders. We're building out things that will help everybody win even more, the market, the clients, the people, and everything. Eric, maybe let's just talk about what the present is right now. Where are we at in this process? August 1, we officially signed documents and combined the two entities. Of course, we're three weeks into that process. Maybe just catch everybody up on where we're at, and then let's talk a little bit about what the market, what clients, what our people can expect over the coming months, and uh, we'll go from there. Yeah. So, yeah, we're three weeks in. We recently expanded our office space here in the industry building down in downtown Salt Lake. And our team, our Inteltex team is going to be moving over this Friday and starting operations here in the same building as the Nexus team starting on Monday. So that's a huge step in the right direction to get all of us under one roof. And the teams are already collaborating very well and working in each other's offices. And so it'll be nice to not have the constant running around and be all under one roof. But so that's step one. What I've been focusing on since August 1st is taking over a client success approach. And I have a task force that I'm working with with stakeholders on both sides of the fence within both organizations. And we're building out client first approach to be able to make sure that we're meeting and exceeding those expectations for our customers. As far as what they can expect going forward is really just more of the same and if not better. We're unwavering in our approach on both sides of the fence to ensuring client success, ensuring they have everything that they need, that their issues are getting resolved in a timely manner. One of the things that is the most exciting about us coming together is we have such great talent on both sides. Very smart, capable people and our collective brain trust within our two organizations coming together as one is just elevates to a whole new level. Everybody has different backgrounds and experience and, and leveraging each side of that is going to be fun. It's going to, it's going to be like fireworks all over again yeah. <laughs> for the team. As we continue for the employees, there's going to be new opportunities for them with a larger organization. We're going to have new and different teams that come out of it. We're working on structuring that all right now so that everybody has the right fit for what they want to be doing. And those announcements will be coming soon for those team members right now. Everybody has just stayed in their current positions, acting in their existing role or previous role. And then we'll be making those adjustments here in the coming weeks. Get everybody aligned, get the teams cross-trained on the different books of business and be charging forward. Yeah, yeah, very cool. You mentioned, and then just to maybe step a couple steps back, as we started to really lean into the, the integration process and the process around bringing the two entities together, but really this integration process and bringing that collective brain trust together, the best practices, the proficiencies of each organization, we've identified a lot of areas where we feel like we can really amplify what each of us has been doing individually and to make that to take those initiatives and really make them a much more significant impact in our client relationships and for our people such as client success teams and we're still in the process of ideation around these that are going to include some technical account managers with customer success advocates and cross-functional teams that are serving our clients needs some new technical and backend administrative teams that we're going to be forming and we've got a roadmap out several years of other teams that we're going to be adding down the road as we add more capabilities and capacities and more product and service offerings and all that kind of stuff. Again, our biggest interest is to drive value. Our biggest interest is to make sure that we're really solving real world problems. And so 
that's been such a cool process. I just want to also honor the, the fact that bringing three founding minds together is a game changer for us at Nexus IT. My, my former business partner and I divided the business just over 10 years ago, 10 and a half years ago, down the middle. And since then, I've been a solo owner, operator, solopreneur, and, and bringing on two new key leaders that are part of the entire vision and ideation process. And then also the execution process of <laughs> bringing that all about. Helping with the lift has been super, super amazing. I'm jazzed as I can possibly be for what the future holds and for what we're going to collectively create together the foundation we're building and a foundation that we're going to continue to scale, not only here in Utah, but regionally and nationally. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later, but it has been um, incredibly refreshing and energizing is the reaction of our two teams. Do you want to maybe just talk a little bit about that? Absolutely. So it's interesting. You hear stories of mergers gone awry all the time where cultures weren't actually aligned and people were not happy and there was a huge fallout and those sort of things. We had worries. Obviously, getting together with multiple people, there's challenges. There's differences in opinions. And the thing that was so exciting, like I said, going back to Dreamweaver, you know, all the stars and floating. With that, the vision was so in line. We were two different buses going to the exact same de destination. And all we did is we had a pit stop and we got we put all of our people on the same bus together. And that first meeting, when we were all together, we came here to industry, we brought our team, and I, I won't lie, my heart was beating pretty hard. I didn't know how it would be. And when we all got together and announced it, it was electric. We were, everyone was clapping and cheering so loud that we couldn't talk for a while. It was like, just amazing. And this, in most industries with mergers, that sort of energy, is tough, but with engineers, we, engineers can be more nervous. Hey, we've done these things. We want to continue doing it this way. We've proven our model and on both sides, people just want to learn. They want to work together and the synergy that's like synergy is the word because of exactly what it means working together that way. But it also, it, there's so much energy behind it. In every meeting we have, people are so pumped up to help customers, to change the way we've done things, to, to pivot and be better and always be working hard. I think sometimes the word trusted advisor, we use that a lot, can almost sound like platitude where we're, it's just a word we're saying that we're trying to say, let people know, Hey, yeah, we're trusted. And that's not the case. That is at our core. We want to be trusted. We want team, our teams to feel the trust they have with us, with our customers and how we can take that to the industry. You can't work with people unless you trust them. It's, we are, everyone in the world are people and we want to work with people and understand people. IT issues are IT issues, but it, it boils down to those are people issues. How can we work together? We're going to use technology to solve them. We're going to use process to solve them, but we're partners together and there needs to be that trust. And with our teams, it was immediate yeah. that trust was there and just incredible. Yeah, no, it was, it was exhilarating adequately. So that everybody in the industry, and if you haven't been down here to industry, come, if you're a partner, a client, or just somebody in the community, reach out, come take a tour with us, you can tour a new space. Nexus IT was in about 5,000 square feet. We've just taken over mutually on another 12,000 square feet here at, at industry, where we're going to continue to grow the teams together. We're already bursting in. We're bursting at the seams and Teletext was bursting at the seams in, the, in their office in Murray. We'll have about 17,000 square feet here. Anyways, come down. I will show it to you. But when we made that, when we made that announcement to our teams and the uproar, all the rest of the businesses in here were like, what the hell are you guys doing? <laughs> <laughs> it, it was, we've had several meetings over the past few weeks and like all the meetings have just, the energy has been off the charts and everybody's, what is going on? But we're having a good time. We're so happy. Again, the cultures have been so well aligned and we knew as we started to talk to each other that, that it was that way we're leaders while you have to create the, the right business outcomes that benefit all the stakeholders we're leaders who lead with their heart as well leaders who deeply care about the people that are around us and that includes our clients right? and, and the outcomes that we create for all those people teams of high trust on both sides 
and they just immediately leaned into each other. They've been so helpful to each other, coming together in task forces and all that kind of stuff. I see that here's the nuances of when tech goes awry. I'm going to get up here in a second and plug a charger in here because we improvised, <laughs> but we're running out of battery here. here so <laughs> we'll, I'll do that here in a second and maybe just adjust the camera because Jake's a little bit off the camera there. But as I do that, and where are we out on time? Do either of you have okay, okay, we got three? Yeah, we got about 15 minutes. We're in pretty good shape. Okay, Eric, maybe talk a little bit more about vision for the future. What is What should clients expect in the next few weeks, if anything, or the next few months? And then what is the future of the combined organizations hold? I realize there's a lot of things that we're stealthy about at the moment because yeah. we're working on some game-changing things. Yeah. But what can we talk about right now that maybe, again, really fits that vision of driving significant value? The biggest emphasis going forward for the new combined teams is just going to be changing that, that client experience and improving on it. We talked a little bit about that. Earl mentioned we're going to be implementing technical account managers across the board for, for these customers that they'll really have a dynamic team between a technical account manager, sales rep, and then an escalations team, our service desk team that is all there to support them. They will be familiar faces. They will have very good relationships with key stakeholders within our customers' organizations. And really that's all just in an effort to better serve our customer community. And we felt that having that personal touch, that's one thing that it used to be way back when, and I think Earl, you mentioned first we were selling hours. Clear back when we just sold hours, a block of time, and that has changed and now we're selling solutions and we're selling those trusted relationships and all of that goes hand in hand. And so as the, the MSSP life changes, we have to change with it and implement new and better ways to serve the customers. And that's all done through a, having a key stakeholder within our company that is ultimately responsible for respective processes in that customer relationship. Some of the things that we can talk about, we'll, we'll back up a little bit and we'll let you take the charge on this of the news that was announced about the Inc. 5000. That was all pre us. And so we'll let you expand on that in the waiting moments of this and highlight that. Because that is a very prestigious recognition for Nexus IT and we're thankful to be a part of it now. And also with the new combined entity, we should be much higher on the list for years to come. Yeah, yeah, very cool. Maybe and even before I talk about that, just to flesh out this idea of, of a technical account manager, which we both had some semblance of this in our businesses to date. And this is part of the process of bringing together a collective brain trust and bringing together process and procedure and best practices that we've had and that we've each perfected in different ways in our business. Now bringing together and consolidating tech stacks and refining those to create more process and automation where we can do things faster, quicker, be more nimble, adapt to our client needs on the fly. But this technical account manager, really, they become a fractional CIO to, to our clients that is helping our clients on the fly adapt, again, their technology to their business plan so that the technology is a driver of that business plan, a yes. driver of that growth, not just another thing that they're dealing with. And certainly our vision has always been as independent entities and now as a combined entity as to never be a detractor from the business, but to be a driver to that business. So often, unfortunately, technology, when misaligned and mismanaged, does become a detractor to the business. And that's where you have those breakdowns of trust in the relationship between the rest of business and technology and IT is when technology doesn't work and it's thorn in people's side, it isn't something that's helpful to them. And so I know that's something we've all worked really hard to solve. That being said, that's one of the things that has led Nexus IT, that approach, right, has led Nexus IT and now with Intellitex on board, recently having been named to the Inc. 5000 list, which Candidly, it's the first year we've applied for it. It's one of those things you have to apply for. We probably would have been on the list even five years ago, maybe, but it's the first year that, that we've applied for it. And, but we're very proud to be recognized on that list. We actually, um, we can publicly announce this. And we haven't, Angela might kill me for this. I, this announcement will go, I think, more official next week. But the Nexus IT is being recognized. The CRN 150 fast growth list, which is the 150 fastest growing 
MSPs or MSP, MSSPs nationwide. We ranked at number 50. That's with Leviathons like Accenture and IBM and big companies. We're ranking at number 50 on the fastest growing MSP, MSSP nationwide right now. And again, that is all pre IntelliTex joining us on this journey and the future we're going to create together. We'll continue to look for those kinds of things coming up. We're really excited about that. We're excited for those things to help us continue to recruit the right partners, the right talent in this business. Talent, of course, again, at this value added approach, we have to have the right talent that can help us deliver on that. And so recruit and retain that talent by being an awesome place to, to do work and do business and an awesome team to, to have fun with are all part of the future. Again, we're looking at significant enhancement in our services, particularly as they revolve around the, the cybersecurity and compliance advisory and consulting and then the, all of the solutions that plug into those needs and into that ecosystem. IT, part of our roadmap here involves becoming also a, not just a tech enabled services business, but a, a services business that also has product. We both have IP already with under our umbrellas, of uh, workflows and automation and all sorts of things that we've built in our tech stacks that we use to, to provide our client services to our clients, but we have a lot of new product innovation that we're going to be working on behind the scenes, things that are going to, again, be enablers to our clients that are going to solve those problems in their business around cyber and compliance at a far higher scale. And so there, there's a lot of cool things that we're working on. Again, some of these things you have to be a little bit ambiguous about there until we're ready to really launch those, but just uh, tell them a little bit about what the future might hold for us. But maybe let's just talk a little bit about some of the other things happening around town. I know there's some things we're going to be involved in over the next few months that would be fun for the community to know, for clients and partners to know about. Jake, do you want to talk about that? Yeah, we've got Silicon Slopes coming up. It's an amazing event. It's really a game changer. It is so fun to see what, obviously, we have a nationwide footprint, and we don't want to discount that. But there is a lot of excitement in the Utah community, and I don't think that should be underplayed. We as Utahns have worked really hard to focus to bring business here, and we're becoming the next place to be, if not what we're already there. And that is very exciting to be part of a culture that has the same excitement that we have, that around the whole state, things are buzzing. And now Nexus IT, we're going to be right at that pinnacle. Now we're bleeding orange and it's very exciting, but Silicon Slopes is coming up next Wednesday, right? Okay. September. Okay. Yeah. The, yeah. Live suicide prevention event mission that Brandy Vega, Vega Studios is putting on. We're going to, we're going to help out with that from a technology perspective and be partners in that. Tacos Together happening at Rio Tinto RSL. They're going to try to build the Guinness Book of World Records, largest blanket port, which will be a lot of fun. And that's our buddies, Paul Sheehan and Lindsay Ivey's involved there. A bunch of cool people that are going to in that little monthly get together that's a lot of fun here in Utah. With Silicon Slopes Tech Summit, definitely check that out again. I've got John Bowers and Garrett Clark from Silicon Slopes will be joining me here in a few weeks on Tech Beat and we'll talk more about the Tech Summit. Check that out, get your tickets now. Generally, there's in the neighborhood of even with COVID still being a thing. This spring, I think that there was nearly 20,000 people and over more like 22 or 23,000 tickets sold or something like that. And we expect that to be a really good event. That brings again crowd from around the country, sometimes an international crowd of people coming to see what's the latest, greatest and connect and make relationships. We've always enjoyed being involved in that. Let's see, Eric, for clients benefits, should, is there any immediate changes in the next few weeks that they should be aware of or know about? Are things going to continue status quo? Maybe we can talk about that. Yeah. So for right now, things will continue status quo until we get a few more details hammered out and then we'll be communicating those technical account manager and client success team communications will go out to the customer and then we'll be making the rounds with them as well making introductions but for right now it's more the same that they're used to so we don't want to let them think anything's changing too dramatically but for that stuff that is changing it will be for the better better ability to serve the customer and meet their needs and like Earl touched on leaning heavily into that virtual CIO role will be all part of this and really being a significant contributor within the organization and being that tech visionary for the C-suite. Yeah. yeah. One thing I'd like to mention with that, I don't think it can be 
said enough that we are truly a brain trust. And where we have so much advantage is we all, like, all only know what we know. We all have our experience and that has forged who we are and our journey and where we know have, have refined our own craft. But an organization like ours has 30 or 40 different techs who have all had their own journeys. And we're able to look at things in a different lens than most people can because we have so many people looking at that lens. And we are so excited at Intellitex that we had a very, our team has a lot of depth. They've done very well and we've been able to really serve our customers. And now we're going to be able to amplify that four or five fold because we're joining a larger team and we're going to be able to use that brand trust to really benefit people, to take a different look at every angle. That's like Earl said, we're looking in the future and we're trying to live in the future and we have our team members who are here checking all the different issues that are coming up, pushing things out, making sure things are done. And the collaboration is just incredible. And what we're able to accomplish quicker, faster, and with more care to the customer. That's what the customer should see is that in-depth care and that, that trusted advisor and how much we love our customers. They are friends to us and, and we care about them. I think that Sometimes you don't want to be too mushy or those sort of things as business people, but we do care about people and it's our passion to help people. And we're going to be able to take that onto a larger stage and do it better and more efficiently. And with that technical account manager, they're going to be able to feel that. We want people to feel the love. In other words, again, we're both very client experience centric sort of organizations. We carefully craft behind the scenes, those client experiences and their engagements with us. And as such, when we do actually combine the teams together for frontline support, for escalations, for projects, for knock and sock teams and all that kind of stuff, clients should perceive very little difference other than the fact that they'll now have a larger team, a more extended team with even more capabilities and knowledge that can help them, but the experience won't really change. And we're designing that on purpose. So we're still in the process of integrating our, all of our technology tools and everything together, which again, we're identifying opportunities there for where we can streamline that even more and add more value into the relationships. What do we got? The name of the new entity still Nexus from our buddy, Greg Johnson. Greg is a web tech security, by the way, he is a strategic partner that we use for some of those CISO and cybersecurity engagements. As of right now, Greg, there is, there's no change to the name of the entity. We do plan as we get through this merger project and we're trying to bite off one piece at a time as we go here and not try to do too much all at once. We do plan to do some sort of soft rebrand that will embody the spirit of both entities, both brands. We plan to engage some branding experts in that process and figure out what what the brand is going to exactly be. I wouldn't expect a massive change, but um, yeah, we want to bring that into a little more modern era. And again, take what's been built by both the teams and bring that together in a really meaningful way. Yeah. Mallory, any other cool questions out there that we should get to? We are past time, but that's okay. Chris Sosulka, I live in Virginia and the buzz around Utah's tech support development is even resonating here on the East Coast. Makes me want to move there. It's good Come stuff, on. Chris. <laughs> awesome. Any yeah. comments about that, Eric? Yeah, Utah's a great place to live. There's so much to do here. Everybody that visits here loves it because you can golf and go skiing in the same day. There's tons of hiking, biking, motorsports, you name it, Utah has it to offer. So it's a great place to live. It's a little higher elevation change than out on the East Coast. You'll see some pretty tall, amazing mountains. And there's no humidity here. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Although this summer, yeah, it's been weird. It's, yeah. <laughs> we had torrential downpour up on the mountain last night. Like it's, uh, it's been a little crazy this summer. I think. All right, I think uh, we're probably good. Any parting words that you two want to add before we wrap here? Just expect great things from us. We are so excited, pumped up, and we are going to be inviting a lot of people on this journey with us, and it's going to be, we're going to make the Lord of the Rings look boring compared to our journey. Behind. <laughs> it's low for us. <laughs> for me, just, yeah, I couldn't be more excited to, to join forces and we're stronger together. We'll be able to achieve more together than fighting each other. So excited to, to be a part of it. And yeah, we got some serious 
plans in the works and just keep your ear to the ground because we'll be making a lot of noise. Yeah, <laughs> that's the plan. And noise that, again, isn't just about making noise. It's noise that's about helping our clients win, helping our people win, and making sure that those are wins for the market as well. And that's our commitment. Look, business is never perfect. We all know that. Those that are founders and leaders out there, business is never perfect. We won't profess to always be perfect 100% of the time. We will profess that our, our alignment and our core values are where they should and need to be. And that's what we're building to. And we stay true to that all the time and just continue to expect more greatness, but on, a, on an even higher level as we continue to bring these organizations together, as we continue to collectively ideate on the future and how we solve problems for the future and how we enable our clients' businesses more, how we create better outcomes for our clients, for the market, for our people. That's all stuff that we're working on actively all the time and thank you all for joining us today thanks for the support here on tech beat again join me in the upcoming weeks some of the guests that we've got coming up garrett clark and john bowers from silicon slopes sid tetro from ceo of brandless nate randall ceo of gab wireless among a, a bunch of other really great guests we're going to go ahead and sign off for uh, the hour and uh, we'll see you all in a few weeks see you.